Hey YouTube, it's Cheyenne Lee Bearson and I have an exciting project I'm about to start working on. The weather is not exactly what I was hoping it was gonna be this morning. It's actually pretty gloomy, um, not what I was expecting today. So I hope this project still works. I am gonna need solar for it. So fingers crossed that the sun comes out. Basically what this is, is this is a hummingbird fountain. It's hummingbird season here in Florida. Hummingbird season is typically from about September to February, March. We start seeing them in September. They start leaving around February or March. And I've got some pretty consistent visitors. If you're not familiar with hummingbird behavior, they're pretty territorial. They'll find their one little patch of flowers and they will defend it to no end. So I usually put up some feeders and stuff like that. But let's get right into talking about this fountain. So this fountain itself to build cost me about 30, 40 bucks. Um, I already had the pot, so that is a cost that I was able to deduct, but the flowers are what bumps up the price. So you can do this and not add the flowers and get out for around $30, $40. But me, I wanted to totally landscape around it, so I spent about 100 bucks on flowers too. So I'm up to about 140 on this project. I think I totally forgot to mention that it's sunrise right now. That's why it's so dark and gloomy as well, so... The sun just came up about 15 minutes ago, and right now we're dealing with this. So a lot of gloomy skies, hopefully something clears up for us. This is the area that I plan to put the fountain and then do the landscaping. So it's a nice little triangular piece. It's not too big, it's maybe mm, four feet across this way and I maybe have two or three feet to work with here. I don't want to get too close to the shed. There are a few moving parts of this project so I'm going to do my very best to explain everything up front and not leave anything out but what we're going to start with is our plastic bin. This was listed as at Home Depot as a I think like a shallow bird bath or something like that it was nine something almost ten dollars um i would have really liked it in terracotta brown any color other than black but black was all that they had i went to two stores home depot and lowe's and could only find black at lowe's so here's what we're working with oh i got my morning coffee too oh, so good i'm actually getting a little bit of better lighting the sun's finally starting to peek through those clouds so back to what i was saying the next thing is the pot. Now you want a pot that has a little bit of a, uh, like a ridge around the edge, like a flat surface so that the hummingbirds can land on that because they like to like kind of fluff themselves up, get a little bath, take a sip of water, but they need something to land on. I think that pot was somewhere around 25 bucks when I bought it. I've had it for like two years now. I had a rose bush in it that was doing really well and then it randomly just died. So what better way to put it back to use in the yard than to turn it into something for the hummingbirds. So let's do this, but also we're gonna need, need your fountain pump. This one is solar. I ordered this pump on Amazon for $15. It had like 4,000 good reviews, so I figured it must work pretty decent. The only thing that I do wanna point out is the straw does not come with it. You will need some kind of straw. Um, I'll put the link to both the straw and the pump filter in the description so you guys can get that. What I'm going to need next is some cinder blocks. I have those on hand, had a few of those spare at my house, so didn't need to purchase those. I also got some little 70 cent bricks. Um, those are just gonna be in case I need to prop it up under the pump to get a little bit more leverage. Not sure if I'm gonna need those, but we will end up seeing in just a bit here. So let's get started. Let's go put our thing down, plan out where we're gonna put the fountain and get to work. I just got the cinder blocks out and let me say, these are way heavier than I expected. I am so glad I didn't have to buy these in the store. It, it would have been a pain lugging those around and putting them in my car and to the plant store and all that stuff. So super glad I had those on hand. If you, on hand, if you don't have those, I'm sorry, you're just gonna have to do it the old fashioned way or you can leave yours low. The only reason that I want these is to give my um, my bath a little bit of leverage so that I can see it better. Dirt down, I'm going to stage where our fountain is going to go. If you want to be a perfectionist with this, 
I suggest laying down um, bed liner, like anything, any kind of weed protection barrier. It's pretty cheap typically. I don't think I'm gonna put it down just because I'll be able to weed and keep it nice and tidy. It's gonna be a focal point in my yard, so I'm gonna work on that. Um, and it's a lot of work to put the weed barrier down. I've tried it before. I'm just, something goes on my leg, it's a plant. I've tried it before, I'm just not good at it. Taylor's good at it, but he's not here, so. I'm working with what I got. I'm gonna start with setting down the bird bath itself. Then I'll layer the cinder blocks underneath. I'm thinking I'm gonna need four, might get away with two, but we'll see. So let's take this. You can see if you want the dimensions for it. Nine gallon, 26 diameter, seven inches deep. Anything around that'll work. If you wanna do bigger, do bigger. I'm probably too close. If you wanna do smaller, do smaller. This is what I found. This was really the only option other than a jumbo one. Okay, what I'm gonna do is set it down and then I'm gonna go to the points in my yard where I would be sitting or standing in hopes of seeing something of this. So for instance, I sit over here. So I need to make sure that I'll have a clear view of it. I also like to look out my window in the house and take a look out. Um, and so I wanna be able to check both points before I do anything set in stone um, and wanna make sure I can have a clear line of vision because it would be a little bit annoying to do all of this and then realize I can't even see it. So gonna take a sec, check that out, and then we'll get started. I actually really like where it's at right now. I use three cinder blocks. I might take one out because we've got excess around the edges. It's nice for support because I forgot to mention I'm gonna be adding two bags of river rock to the plastic dish. So I'm, I think I'm gonna make an executive decision here and keep the third. It's a little less aesthetically pleasing than I'd like, but the plants are gonna cover that anyway, hopefully. So let's do a little description on what I got for plants. This is called a firecracker bush. They get pretty big. They have little red flowers that come off the hummingbirds like. Anything that is a tubular flower, they're gonna be attracted to because they can get their whole bill, beak, whatever you wanna call it, down in there, get the pollination um, service they do, you know, do that and get the nectar that they need. They feed about every 10 to 15 minutes. So they're pretty territorial. They'll find their little patch of flowers, their feeder, whatever it is. They'll hone in, they'll guard it from other hummingbirds. But from what I've seen, they, they do not mind sharing the water. So I am gonna put some hummingbird attractive plants around it. One of my favorite that I won't be putting is fire spike. I'm not putting fire spike here. I have them all around my yard, but I'm not putting them here because this area is a little bit shadier. It, from where I'll be putting the solar panel, it'll work but for where the flowers are gonna hit, I don't know if it will have enough sunlight per day for the fire spike to bloom frequently enough for the hummingbird. So fire spike like full, full sun all day long. This is gonna be a little bit shadier. The next plant I'm going to be using is campfire. I have never seen this plant before. So I've seen a lot of red leaf plants. I typically don't like them. They're kind of ugly to me but hummingbird's favorite color is red. Oh, I thought I just saw one. Hummingbird's favorite color is red. So this is gonna hone in their eyes to this. And then they're also gonna be attracted to hopefully these little flowers. These might be too small for them. I'm not 100% sure because the blooms are fading off on this. They're kind of white and purple. Um, but either way, the red flower or the red leaves will attract them to the other flowers that I'm gonna be putting in the little area that I'm doing. Next up, these are some of my favorite. The hummingbirds and bees love them, but they are so delicate and wispy. They're, they're like sticks. Every time I plant them, I bust them all up. They end up dying within like three to four months. Sometimes you can get six, but they're really not a hardy plant. Um, so be careful with these. They're cheap. They're anywhere from like four to six bucks, but yeah, they are a little bit weak. Like you can already Oh, that's not a busted off, but yeah, pretty, pretty flimsy. So we're going to be careful with these. Next up is Roman red salvia. So both of these are salvia uh, family. These have a bigger tube that comes off. Um, they're the same delicateness. So, so be careful if you're using these. another member of the salvia family. I've actually never seen this one before. It is called Cochinia. 
it's very fragile. Just getting it in my car, I broke off like six branches. So looking back, I probably wouldn't get this one again, but it's here now, so we're gonna use it. So what I've done here is staged it. I dug a few holes, put the pots in the ground. Um, so I haven't planted the plants yet because sometimes what I'll do is I'll dig the holes, I'll plant the plants and then I'll realize, oh, I don't like that there. I wanna move that. And then I have to dig them up. So I'm just gonna let this sit with me for about 10 minutes, um, see if there's anything that bugs me and if it needs to be moved. If it is, then I'll move it around and then I will plant them because the last thing I wanna do is be digging and undigging plants uh, for an hour because I can't decide where I want them. So this is a good idea if you're indecisive or you just wanna sit with it for a minute before you plant. We're going to go right ahead and start on our pump and fountain. We're going to be building a little box for our pump to keep it safe from the river rock. One thing you want to make sure of is that your tag is not facing because it's going to be heavy in just a minute. So spin that like that. And I'm just going to make a square touching the cinder blocks just like this. Um, just a little spot for the pump. Okay, so you can see we've got a nice little square. The pump's gonna go right in the middle and then we're gonna put the pot on top. So let me see if I can't set this up. Thankfully, the solar panel has a lot of reach. Um, what we're gonna wanna do is this hole here. I'm gonna put a straw in it. That way it can reach up through my pot because this is so low. It's, it, it's not gonna get enough power through to come through my pot without a little bit of help. So that's what that's gonna look like. And let's do a little test. So far so good. I do wanna point out a huge mistake that I made with the river rock. I should have never poured it directly into the bird bath without washing it first. Doing it this way ended up costing me a lot of time and we ended up having to get the rock out of the bird bath, take everything apart, rinse it thoroughly, and then put it all back in. So it was quite the hassle. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you learned how to make a fountain and learned a little bit about hummingbirds in Florida and their habits. Again, I'm Cheyenne Lee Bearson, and until I see you next time, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment on your favorite part or what you learned about this video. Bye-bye.